I have mentioned in a previous video that you have to learn Docker and you have to learn it right now irrespective of which field in information technology or IT you are aspiring or you are working on. And I explained the reasons behind it and all that. So what about Kubernetes? Why do we need Kubernetes and why do we have to learn it also right now? Whether you are a network engineer, cybersecurity engineer, machine learning aspirant, or working in machine learning as an MLOps engineer, or machine learning engineer, AI engineer, data engineer, data scientist, data analyst, all of these professions, the hot one, you need to learn Kubernetes for sure, and you must learn it right now with no delay. Let me take you to explain Kubernetes very quickly and to understand why learning Docker alone is not enough. If you are aspiring to work in a large scale environment, you will have hundreds, thousands, or maybe tens of thousands of containers for the different tools and pipelines and jobs that you are working on. And as the number of nodes and the number of containers increase and the number of applications and pipelines and data analysis and all that increases, then the number of containers will be way complex to control and manage in a manual fashion. So you need a tool that is going to look after the containers, a tool that will monitor them, a tool that will do the self-healing. If one container fails, it will remove that container and just add a replacement. If the load increases, it's going to add more containers. If the load decreases, it's going to shrink the containers. And it's going to give you all the monitoring and metrics that you need to ensure that you are running a healthy environment. And the tool number one that does that is Kubernetes. So you need to have the containers on the nodes monitored by what we call an orchestration and management tool or orchestration and provisioning tool. And that is Kubernetes. That's why, where Kubernetes excels, where you have a control plane that is going to be the brain that will be monitoring all the time and communicating with agents within the nodes in order to make sure that they are all healthy. If there is an instruction to kill one of the containers or add one of the containers or scale the containers or the utilization is going high. So now we have to add way more. All of that is going to be done centrally by the control plane and that's where Kubernetes shines and it is the number one. Of course, OpenShift is a competitor, but Kubernetes focuses more on the application side and that's why it is very popular, not underestimating OpenShift, but the concept is similar. Kubernetes is one of the CNF, uh, CNCF uh, projects for sure. And to be cloud native, they expect you to use containers and to have a control and orchestration plane like Kubernetes. So why do I have to learn it now for the different professions? Let's go ahead and also use our friend ChatGPT and find out the answer. All right, so here is the question that I have. And I have mentioned a lot of the common and hot professions or careers in IT and some of the legacy as well. So how would Kubernetes help these professions, data analysts, machine learning engineers, AI engineers, data scientists, ML ops engineers, cybersecurity engineers, and network engineers? Of course, I am one of the uh, strong advocates that the network career has lost its brightness, has shined already and that has faded and now i think it's on a decline and with the cloud and with ai and machine learning and all that it is on a decline or at least it's not the highest paid among the top five or ten highest paid jobs in most of the countries i'm talking about the need for network engineer the supply is way more than the demand anyways let's go back to our point so the question is kubernetes is often thought of as just for DevOps. And that's the main misconception. A lot of the aspirants in the new tech jobs, like the AI and machine learning and data science related ones, they think, you know what? No, that is infrastructure. I don't need to worry about that. Okay, but it's actually highly valuable across a wide range of tech roles, including data, AI, security, and networking. So let's break that down one by one. Okay, so for data analysts, how would Kubernetes help? Remember when I looked when we looked at the slide the overview of the Kubernetes, we mentioned that we need this tool when when our environment scales to a point where it is very hard to manage without an orchestration and management tool. So for data analysts, 
Kubernetes will help self-service Jupyter and business intelligence environments like Jupyter Hub, Apache uh, Superset, run scheduled ETL jobs in isolated containers, and process large data sets on like Spark on Kubernetes, for example, and then access version environments to avoid work on my machine issues. So now you have environments that are repeatable. Basically, it will help you do the data work at scale with reproducibility and reusability. For machine learning engineers, it will help them train models at scale. So you'll find that everything Kubernetes gets in is at scale using GPU enabled nodes. There are other tools that are not GPU enabled and they cannot do this. Use Kubeflow for end-to-end -end machine learning workflows. Run parallel experiences, experiments using Kubernetes jobs and Argo workflows and serve models in production using KeyServe with auto-scaling. From development to deployment or production, it's all in the same and consistent environment. For AI engineer, it will help them run real-time inference services like LLMs or vision NLP models, deploy micro microservices that integrate AI features at scale and integrate streaming data and message queues using Kafka and NATS, and manage GPU allocation efficiently. So you can scale intelligent apps without reinventing deployment. For data scientists, Kubernetes can help containerized notebook and data science environments, Jupyter RS RStudio, uh, share environment and pipelines with peers for reproducibility, reusability, and schedule long running batch jobs. So environment or experiment freely, and there are no bottlenecks at scale again, as we mentioned. For LMO ops engineers, it's very obvious, like DevOps, this is for the pipelines, CI, CD pipelines, MLOps pipelines, and so on, uh, using Kubeflow, MLflow, or Jenkins X, using GitOps tools like Argo CD, and Prometheus and Grafana for monitoring, and so on. So you'll find that the pipelines are very close from a concept perspective like DevOps and Cloud. For cybersecurity engineer, deploy cybersecurity monitoring tools, like these tools in containers, run container scanning tools and network policies. And for network engineers, design and monitor virtual network technologies, CNI uh, plugins, ingress controllers and service matches, DNS load balancing, and so on. So basically, that will be your data center, the Kubernetes when you are dealing with networking. I really don't bother much about networking because I come from that background and I have left it behind my back about eight years ago. All right, so no matter what is the career that you are aspiring into IT, you have to learn Kubernetes and you must learn it right now. Don't dive so deep into data science without knowing how you will deploy it or without experimenting how you will deploy it. I know in large environments, there could be a cloud team or a, a team that will take care of this, but at the end of the day, it's you that you can control your comprehension of the entire thing. And at the entry and mid level, you will not say, no, 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 I'm just a data analyst. I don't care about that. The less senior you are, the more stuff that you will be requested to do. And you need to have that overarching view of what's happening because when you grow and you become the consultant or you become the architect and so on, then you will need to understand the entire thing. And maybe you will lead a team and you will understand in meetings what they mean and whether they are genuine in what they are saying or they're just playing around and so on. So learn Kubernetes and learn it right now. There will be a lot of videos like this one coming up and even videos that will cover technologies themselves. So please consider subscribing, activating the notification and give us a like and share. So let everyone benefit from this video. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video.